Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. I want you to all do me a favor and think back to 2020 in December and what you were probably most excited about when it came to video games in that time frame. And if you're like me, you were probably thinking about Cyberpunk 2077 and just how much of an absolute mess it was when it launched. Now to people who've asked, I've never really kept up much of a secret. I had a big distaste for Cyberpunk and it wasn't because of the world or the characters or the story or really anything to do with the actual game. It really just came down to the fact that I was concerned that I would lose progress because of bugs and glitches and save corruptions and just a whole mess of things. But like many say, time heals all wounds and Cyberpunk 2077 is a much different game than I remember it. And now after having put nearly 70 hours into this incredibly huge game, I feel comfortable saying it is one of my favorite games of all time. Let me go ahead and share with you why that is. So long before I was aware of the Cyberpunk franchise, and by franchise I mean specifically the world that Cyberpunk 2077 inhabits, uh, going back to the original RPG tabletop game by M Michael Pondsmith, I was already a big cyberpunk fan. My favorite movie is Blade Runner, so Blade Runner essentially invented the visual illustration of what we think of cyberpunk now. Obviously it's argued that some came before it and gave sort of an idea of what cyberpunk might look like, but Blade Runner was really the first to really envision and capture the entirety of what we think of as cyberpunk. Of course, post Blade Runner, I went on to absolutely adore the genre and love things like Akira, Ghost in the Shell, The Matrix, just so many different types of cyberpunk projects I was absolutely floored with. I just thought they were the best. So you could imagine that when Cyberpunk 2077 was coming out, I was so excited. I really just could not imagine the fact that I was finally going to get that cyberpunk world in a video game form. Now obviously cyberpunk video games have been around for a long time. We've had games like Deus Ex, System Shock, and even Final Fantasy 7 in some respects could be considered cyberpunk. But what Cyberpunk 2077 was aiming to do was make an incredibly immersive world with RPG choices and elements that were going to allow you to play out a cyberpunk fantasy in however you wanted to do it. And that was just so incredibly exciting as a fan of the genre. Especially when you consider how much goodwill CD Projekt Red had for the fans after the release and success of The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 was an incredible experience and I still to this day hold it as one of my favorite games of all time. I think that game has an incredibly amazing story, very well written characters, and it is such a good adaptation from the books. Fast forward to December 2020 and Cyberpunk released in an incredibly broken state and caused so much backlash from the release of the game that multiple people asked for refunds, their stock in CD Projekt Red dropped drastically, and even though it sold incredibly well, the feelings from the fans were extremely, extremely negative and things were not looking so great for CD Projekt Red. I would even argue in some respects that the quality of the game and the game itself actually got lost in the shuffle of all the politics surrounding the game. It left a lot of people scratching their heads as to what in the world was going on and even though people were buying the game, people were so upset with the state it released in that it was hard to even enjoy the game that was there. But, like a few select success stories before it, Cyberpunk took the time, the developers huddled down, and they started fixing a lot of the glitches, the bugs, the issues that the game was experiencing on both consoles and PC. And now in 2023, so many people are starting to experience the game for somewhat the first time and are realizing it's an incredibly engaging RPG and, dare I say, immersive sim, and it is worth your time now more than ever before. I'm gonna obviously go ahead and kind of get into the meat of what makes Cyberpunk such an incredible experience. 
So right off the bat, Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG. It has a lot of RPG elements. However, I would not say that it is an RPG where every choice you make has a massive or very important consequence or choice attached to it. In fact, what I would say is it almost is kind of like Fallout 4 in the way that the things that you say to the people in the game kind of dictate how they might respond to you and it might kind of be more of a tonal shift as opposed to an actual choice. What Cyberpunk is definitely more interested in doing is providing the player with a ton of different side quests and stories inside this incredibly designed world. Much like a Rockstar game, when you're just walking down the city, you can see so much personality from both NPCs and the buildings and the world around you that it feels so incredibly immersive and you feel like you're just transported to an entirely different place than where you get to go in most video games. And even though it is a futurized city, you still feel that this is a much different world than you would experience in like a Grand Theft Auto or like a Watch Dogs or something that takes place in a more metropolitan area. The world of Night City is so much more deep and varied than most video game worlds that I've actually been in, and it is just so incredibly dense and packed full of things and stories behind every corner that it really just separates itself from so many other games and the way that they tell their stories visually and through the environment. Obviously, when Cyberpunk wants to tell its story, it does so with very interesting and well-written characters. I feel this is a good spot to kind of start touching on the plot of Cyberpunk. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get into any spoilers. I don't feel that this game deserves to have itself spoiled. I think that the experience in which you go on as V in Night City is something that you have to experience for yourself. And I would definitely not want to rob you of that experience. So the plot of Cyberpunk 2077 revolves around V. He's on his way new to Night City. You get to pick your background of your starting, like where you want to be from. Um, you can either like be raised in Night City, you could be from outside, uh, like in the desert, or like part of a different tribe, or you could even be part of one of the corporations. So maybe you grew up as like a corpo kid. I see one of the big flaws people point out is that your choice in where you come from doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of the story but what I think it does well is it really immerses you when you go to speak to somebody and then you have a dialogue option that is specific to your background so you can respond to an NPC based off of what your background is so as V is going into Night City and he's starting to become a basically a hired hand, somebody who goes out and they take care of missions or like maybe some shady dealings. And he ends up running into an incredible character named Jackie who they basically get in together. And as they do more work together, they end up getting a gig that is going to set them up very high, both socially as well as monetarily. So they take on this job, things go wrong and all of a sudden V gets this microchip inside of his head that has a construct of Keanu Reeves who plays Johnny Silverhand and that is pretty much the opening of the game so I'm not spoiling anything by saying that essentially what goes down is that V has to get figure out what to do with this chip inside of his head and to make sure that Johnny does not overtake his personality because of the software in the chip. I'm not going to touch on any further plot details as to not spoil anything, but the way that the story is, plays out lends itself so well to bounce between the characters of Johnny and V and the dialogue that they have since they're both sharing the same headspace and body literally. Johnny is a hothead rocker who has a very shady past and has definitely done some things that are probably not seen as good to many, but he has his reasons and he has this motive that feels so well developed that even if you don't agree with his motives, you can still understand where he's coming from. And that to me is the perfect example of a very well-written character. And thankfully it's not exclusive to V and Johnny. All the characters that you interact with in Night City 
are really well developed and they all feel like they have a very defined and interesting backstory. And even if you don't get to know their backstory, you can kind of pick up little details just with their dialogue alone. I know some were very, very upset in the fact that the choices that you make in Cyberpunk from a dialogue perspective don't necessarily pan out the same way in other games. But what I will say is Cyberpunk kind of operates more as an immersive sim in the way that it structures its levels, its missions, and the way that you interact with people. And even though it operates in more of an immersive sim fashion, it still manages to pack an incredibly engaging open world alongside of it. So you kind of get what feels like mission structure from a Deus Ex game, but also get the open world of something like a GTA. In that sense, it's very unique and much different than a lot of games position themselves, where you kind of have to be one or the other. You don't typically get a big open world to explore in addition to mission structure from something like an immersive sim. And that kind of leads me into what you'll be doing in Night City. What is the gameplay like? Essentially, it's a lot like maybe a Far Cry game or like a Deus Ex game where the point is combat, or if you wanna approach everything stealthily and never engage in combat, you could pretty much also do that as well. CD Projekt Red has baked in a lot of options for you to play the game how you would like to. If you would like to build your character as somebody who is tech first and combat second, you could absolutely do that. In fact, the quick hack system and hacking in the game is incredibly fun. It's way more interesting and engaging than I expected it to be. It feels like everything has a purpose and it feels like so many different things can be hacked, including your enemies. Thanks to the fact that pretty much everybody in Night City has some kind of cyber implant in them, you can do things like ping an enemy to find out what other tech and what other enemies are connected to it. So rather than having to, like in a Ubisoft game, have to individually ping every single enemy so that you can see their outline, you can literally just ping one enemy and then have the entire network of people around him show on the map so that you can actually see who all all of your enemies are. It's little touches like that that makes it feel like the game was way more thought out and it likes to take away a lot of little inconsistencies with other games and fix those issues and I really appreciate that that it's not trying to waste my time. And then on the flip side, if you were to decide to not do any tech at all and you wanted to go strictly guns blazing, you can absolutely do that. In fact, I kind of have a semi build in the game where I have my character who's able to basically rip a turret off as well as deactivate it because both my engineering is so high and then also my strength is high enough that I can do both. And it really creates a very fun environment where every combat encounter feels very different and it feels like you could get a lot lot of different options depending on your playstyle. One of the biggest gripes I initially had with Cyberpunk is the combat to me did not feel very good and it did not feel very impactful. However, what I realized is it was not that the game did not have good combat, it's just that the very beginning of the game does not have very interesting weaponry for you to play around with. So when you're in the beginning stages of the game, if you find the combat to be a little boring or a little bit arbitrary, please consider sticking with it because I can guarantee you if you manage to max out your stats properly, the combat will get incredibly fun and you can feel like an absolute cyber god dispatching your enemies in literally any way you see fit. Another thing I was actually really surprised with with the combat is the fact that you get a lot of different weapons. And I'm not talking just like handguns and machine guns and things like that. Of course, those are going to be in there, but you get things like samurai swords, butcher knives, chainsaws, baseball bats. Like there are so many different types of weapons that you get. And obviously, since it's a loot system, all the weapons have a level and then they also have a rating factor that shows you how special the weapon is. And then thankfully, since there's also a craft crafting system, you can actually disassemble those weapons and be able to put it into separate types of components so that you can actually upgrade your other weapons. It's all very thought out and I really appreciate so many different options for such a sprawling game like this. Going on to the next big thing, side quests in Cyberpunk are incredible. And I'm not just talking like Witcher 3 incredible. I think, that I'm not going to spoil it, but there is a side quest in Cyberpunk to me, that is better than any main or side quest in The Witcher 3. 
and in almost any other game I've ever played. It was so subtle and poignant, and the emotion, it starts off like a very normal mission, but it very quickly becomes a tragic tale of somebody who is trying to seek redemption, and it is just the most beautiful thing I've seen in almost any video game. If you're curious which side quest it is, I'm not gonna spoil it here, but it's called Sinner Man. You absolutely, if you're gonna play this game, must do that side quest. It is a masterpiece. But other side quests in the game have that kind of impact. They all feel very well thought out and they all feel like important parts of the cyberpunk experience. And the game would not be the same or nearly as good without them. You're still gonna have your standard type of side quest where it's like, okay, go here, kill these enemies, wipe out this base, you know, this sort of Ubisoft style, go to a base or outpost and clear it. You're still gonna have those, but thankfully they always have just a little bit of nuance or a little bit of story to kind of tie into it. So it never feels like something where you are literally just showing up here and killing people for no reason. Which for somebody who's played a very fair amount of Ubisoft games or Far Cry games, it is very appreciative that there's actually a reason for me to go clear out these outposts as opposed to, oh, these are the bad guys, you're the good guy. I'm also grateful that CD Projekt Red decided to finally put in just a ton of different vehicles in the game. You have obviously your motorcycles and then your cars, which admittedly it's not a lot of diversity in the style of vehicle you get to drive, but from the fact that you get to drive like pickup trucks, vans, uh, little dune buggies, like all these types of vehicles lend themselves really well to getting around Night City and the area around Night City. I know I've mentioned it a little bit, but Night City is incredibly dense and just packed with so much interesting environmental storytelling. In fact, I think for me personally, since a Souls game, it's probably the game that has the most interesting environmental storytelling that I've been able to see in any video game. There are so many interesting things from the constant ads and mature themes of the game that just permeate throughout the entire city. Then when you go to actual like alleyways, you can see homeless people and you you can see the effects that living in Night City has on its population. The people in Night City are grungy and grimy, and there's not really a lot of redeeming qualities about a lot of them, but that's kind of what adds to the whole charm and the whole idea of high-tech, low life. Another thing that absolutely floored me with this game is the soundtrack. The soundtrack for this game is an incredible mix of electronica, synthwave, punk rock, metal. There's so many different types of music in this game and each one feels so well done. The fact that they even got artists like Run the Jewels and refused to do songs for the game was just awesome and a really good choice. All in all, the music and sound get a very big thumbs up for me. So we come to the end of this review, this retrospective, whatever you might want to call it, and you might be asking yourself, is this worth picking up? Which I know I did mention before, but if any of this sounds good or fun or interesting or thoughtful or provoking at all, you should definitely go and pick Cyberpunk up. I'm extremely excited for the new DLC that's coming up, and supposedly they're going to do a complete edition like what they did for The Witcher 3, where you can actually get the base game plus the new DLC expansion. I would highly recommend whether you want to play it now or play it then, you should definitely pick up Cyberpunk and give it another shot. It is a masterpiece, a wildly entertaining ride, and a very interesting journey into one of my favorite forms of science fiction. It is well worth the time. Thank you so much for watching guys. I know this is one of my longer videos, but I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it through to the end. If you like me doing more long form videos like this, please comment below. I would love to know your thoughts on it as well. Thank you so much for being a member of the channel or subscribing. I really appreciate it. Now that we've hit a thousand, my goal is to just keep making great content for you all. So I really hope you all enjoy. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you all, stay safe, and take care of yourselves.